Hello and welcome to the utahguide.com podcast. I'm your host Mark Wade with Bob Grove. Today we're here to talk to you about waterfalls in all of the state of Utah, the ones that we like the most. You may have some other ideas and you can post your comments on the podcast comment section. Remember that you can find us at utahguide.com and at utahphotogs.com and you can learn more about Bob and, and myself. Let's just start at the bottom corner of the state, Bob, down by St. George, down here in the corner of Utah and Zion National Park. Let's start there because you and I both love this area. But let's talk. Tell us about what we're seeing here. Well, the, this was a year that you and I went in. Um, it was actually in the first quarter of the year when we it had been raining hard for a couple of days on top of snow, so we knew the waterfalls would be big in the park. And that's generally the case. When you get rain on top of snow, you're gonna get big falls. This is at the Weeping Rock uh, area, just above Weeping Rock. There's a canyon above that area called Echo Canyon. The water is coming out, out of Echo Canyon and it was flowing as big as I've ever seen that day. This only happens when you're getting this type of um, weather condition, rain on top of snow or during the monsoon season during the summer months when you're getting a thunderstorm uh, that's moving through. And so this would be Weeping Rock right here and these are coming off the canyon above and through these crevices. And if we look at a couple of other photographs here in Zion, this is another section kind of close to there, isn't it? Where these crevices, again, the, the plateau up on top gets a lot of water, it, it funnels down into these crevices and then just comes cascading down. And as you said, it happens very rarely. But during the spring, Bob, during the spring, this waterfall and other waterfalls like it will still be flowing. Tell us about this one. Well, this one is actually over in the Court of the Patriarchs in the Sand Bench area. And that one flows only when you're getting, you know, it's it's running down into a dry wash. So that's only going to run when you're getting a heavy thunderstorm or during this when snow is melting, rain on top of snow. That was shot actually in December of this of last year, I believe. Okay. And this one here is the back the back of the canyon, the quarter of the Patriarchs. And this one will run with rainwater and a little bit of snow melt as well. That's a very, that's bigger than it looks like right here. That's probably, what would you say, about a five, 600 foot vertical waterfall? Yeah, that, that one is just right in the very back of where the quarter of the Patriarchs are. That's quite a hike to get back that close to where we shot this. Okay. So we're going to move from Zion National Park, and we should go to our map again here before we, just so that people understand where we're at. Here's Zion National Park, and here is St. George, and just up the freeway from St. George, just right here by near Harrison Harrisburg Junction, Bob is a place that we love to go to all the time called Red Cliffs. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Red Cliffs Recreation Area is near the old historic town of Silver Reef in that general area and it goes back into the Red Cliffs in the Red Cliffs National Conservation Area. Um, and it's not too far a hike, but it's a really popular area. You can see from the photos that was displayed a little earlier that people have carved what we call Moki steps into the rock that you can use to traverse that someone has hooked a rope up to it. And you can hang on to that rope, rope and go up those steps to get to the upper section of those falls. And that's a popular area where kids like to jump into the falls. Slide down, actually, that where the falls coming down into that pool of water, you can slide down into that. And that's a popular place to go, cool off during the hot summer months. And there are actually a couple of other sections. And that's going to be flowing very well this spring. And so people can have an enjoyable time in there. We always, of course, we'll talk about this throughout this podcast. We want to be safe. You want We want you to be safe. So always check out weather conditions before you go, especially in slot canyon areas because they can be running too high and be very dangerous. And then also just find out uh, how conditions are that day, even if it's not raining, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to know the water is running extremely high this year because we have such a large snowpack. This is a, this is a higher view of uh, Gunlock Falls. Let's back that out there. But this... Tell us about how this flows and where this is. This is actually at uh, Gunlock State Park, uh, one of the three state parks in the St. George area. And the waterfall hasn't flowed out of the uh, reservoir in the last couple of years because the 
Uh, we've been in a drought for a number of years, but the last two years we've had such a thin snowpack that the reservoir hasn't come up high enough to run over the rocks. I think the last time was in 2019 or 2020, I believe. But this year, we have a record snowpack this year in the state, and these falls will probably be running well into the summer. They're running very high right now. This is a popular area. A lot of people like to go and watch this because it's so pretty, as you can see in the photo there, that's red rock, sand, sandstone, just a very pretty area. Gunlock Reservoir gets full, it flows over this dam right here, this retention dam, and then it breaks down. It only happens a few years, as you said. And they have now put a, as you see this little uh, building right here, they put a little fee area. And what was it? Is it $5 per vehicle, I think, is what it is to come in and walk up this area? I, I believe it is. There's a parking area just to the right of that building. And it fills up quite often. And then you can park along the highway uh, safely to access the falls from there. You can also access it from the state park entrance, which is just over here, and you walk out behind this hillside and come in right across that retention dam area or near it, and you can walk in from the top. So that's Gunlock Falls. And again, those are those red rock formations. This is an area, I'm gonna go back to our map, Bob, that's just, uh, I'll, I'll point out that from St. George to Gunlock is about 20 minutes to the state park. But going up I-15, we're gonna continue up I-15 past Red Cliffs and take people to an area that we love, don't we, Bob? This is the the northwest section of Zion National Park. And this whole section of the park, you can only access from I-15. It does not connect with car, car traffic. There are no roads connecting the rest of the park. There are probably some walking trails, but uh, you're not gonna, this, most people are not gonna do the walking trails or the long tr hiking trails to get into this section. But in this section, you've got Taylor Creek, North and South Taylor Creek and some other canyons. And I think that's what we're seeing if I'm right, with this picture of you standing at the base of that waterfall, tell us where that's at. Yeah, I think that's on the middle fork of Taylor Creek hike. That's the that's probably the most popular hike in the Colop Canyon section of Zion. It's about five miles round trip. It goes out to a double a double alcove. What's it called? A double arch alcove at the end of the hike. Uh, but this is a waterfall that we ran into on the way there, and. Uh, you know, I haven't seen that too often as well. So that was a real treat when we came across this waterfall. But Taylor Creek does run through there and that runs continually. So you'll often see uh, some small waterfalls through there. Okay, let's move up the road. Actually, we're gonna go, before we go further up the road, we're gonna come back to an area that's just right over here. Here's the town of Tokerville. And out of Tokerville, Tokerville Falls, Tell us, tell us a little story, Bob, about getting out to Tokerville Falls in my truck. Well, it's about a six mile drive from when you get off the road in Tokerville to take the road out to the falls. And the first two miles are pretty rough. Uh, I should have pulled up that picture, Mark, that we have of you. you know, we were in Mark's uh, Ford F-150 and we got up to the first two miles, but uh, must have cut a sidewall or something because we got a flat tire at the top of that section, we had to change the tire there and we end up hiking the remaining four miles out to the falls. But just just as a warning, those first two miles are pretty rough. They're it's very, very rocky and there are some sharp, sharp rocks. So um, most, cars, most cars have four ply tires and I think that's may have been what was on my truck at the time. Now I have 10 wide to make it a little better. but. Uh, yeah, we see we see some cars trying to make it out there. You're gonna it's gonna put a little beam on that on a, a regular vehicle, but you can get out there if you've got some good tires. Uh, it's the reward when you come out here is quite quite impressive, isn't it? Just totally. Yeah, and this wasn't. I can't remember what time of year this was when we shot this, but it wasn't running real high. Currently, I bet that's running just covering all those rocks uh, the, as high as the water is running. That's Leverkin Creek that runs down to the Virgin River that comes out of Zion. And I bet that those rocks are just completely covered right now. All right, so we're gonna take people further. We're gonna come back out of Tokerville. And in fact, you could come out of Tokerville back to I-15 and just work your way up past little spots in the road like Pintura. But as we go north, we're gonna come up to the 
town where there's an exit right here on I-15 that leads to the town of Canaraville. And in Canaraville, tell us the logistics of getting into Canaraville Falls because it used to be that you just kind of went and did your own thing and now they've got a different, they've got a system in the town of Canaraville. They did. Really yeah, the, this uh, hike into Canara Falls has become so popular that a few years ago they had to uh, control the number of people going up the canyon. This is a this is their main source of water to Canaraville. It's their watershed, so they need to manage it. So now it, there's they build a parking lot, and it does cost twelve dollars per person to get a permit, and it maxes out at 150 permits per day. So you want to make sure that if there's a date that you want to go see it, that you check in advance and secure your reservation and get the permit. Uh, the water again. I just checked with the canyon manager today and the water is running very high. Uh, normally when we hike this canyon, it's just above the ankles. Right now it's it's uh, knee deep and they expect it to get as high as thigh deep. And when it gets that high, they'll probably close the canyon temporarily, but that'll only be a temporary close because the water will start coming down. There's still a lot of snow to come down. This is a beautiful hike, slot canyons uh, throughout. This is a picture that you shot when the water flow was much lower. They've actually rebuilt what used to be a a more challenging climb up this rock, haven't they? Yeah, this makes it easy for everyone to be able to get up to the next section. There's another series of waterfalls above this one that comes to the end through a slot canyon to a shelf and another waterfall, and you can't get above that without webbing. But this, yeah, this was way low. Right now, I'm sure that entire area is just completely filled with water. Like I said, it's, it's uh, knee deep. So very different from what we see in this photo, and we hope to get up there in the next week or two. This is a picture, of, it's actually my son climbing up through here, but you're actually walking through the water it's in, pot, in spots where it will be knee deep, it could be thigh deep, it could even be waist deep in some spots. And then it's going to be cold because it's snow melt, and then as you get back in there, uh, check and find out what the conditions are always again. Look for what weather conditions you're at. We're going to take people now up the road a little further to Cedar City, Bob. And there's a couple of things that we have discovered out of the town of Cedar City going up on the mountain. Right now, Cedar City is about 6,000 feet, and you get up over to Brian Head Resort. That's, what, over 11,000 feet there and, and the Cedar Breaks area. But up on top of here, you've got the Ashdown Gorge in this area as you go up. And the picture that we want to get to here is all the way over to Duck Creek Village or over by uh, Navajo Lake, isn't it? Right yeah. here. So you'd come on over high, Highway 14 and find Navajo Lake and turn around and come around the other side of Navajo Lake. And there is a, there's a trail or a dirt road that leads to a, it's probably about right here, a hiking point where you start. And as I recall, Bob, that hiking trail, it's about a half mile each direction to take you to this viewpoint. Tell us about that. Yeah, so this is called Cascade Falls. It's the outlet for Navajo Lake that we saw in the Google Earth photo, um, where most rivers, uh, outlets of lakes are just a river flow coming out of the outlet. This actually, the water seeps into the ground through lava tubes and comes out of the uh, cliff rim here, and it's called Cascade Falls. That's actually the uh, headwaters for the North Fork of the Virgin River that runs through the Narrows in Zion National Park. Bob, you just never cease to amaze me with all the little details that you, you happen to know. Cascade Falls, as you said, is coming out of the side of this mountain. This looks a lot like uh, the Cedar Breaks area or even Bryce Canyon in spaces, doesn't it? It does. I mean, that that's a typical look in this part of the state. The southwest part of Utah is a lot of that red rock. That's actually limestone. Limestone, right. This happens to be limestone. And we should point out that all the, all the red that you see in southern Utah is caused by iron that's oxidizing inside the, the, the rocks or the soil. And it's rusting, basically, and it, it creates these beautiful colors. I'm going to come back to this map because I did skip over Ashdown Gorge in this area out of Cedar City. And in Ashdown Gorge, we have discovered, you and I together, another little waterfall. Talk about this one. Yeah, these are a couple. Of, we found a couple of waterfalls, uh, Mark... Uh, my wife Susan and I walked up uh, uh, Ashdown Gorge one day. Ashdown Gorge is a wilderness area below Cedar Breaks National Monument. 
Beautiful, beautiful hike through canyons, slot canyons. We came to the end here and found these two little waterfalls. Um, it was just a spectacular day. This one, of, this was one of my favorite hikes that we've been on, Mark. I agree with you, and you know, uh, this is one you probably only want to do in. Well, I'm going to say in June, July, August, maybe September, um, after the runoff. But we, as I recall, we were hiking to a place called Flanagan Arch, which is up in there. And it's yeah. a high arch up on a cliff face. And then we went further up and, and found these waterfalls. And so uh, that's a heck of a, a place. Let's take people up the road a little further now and go up past Cedar City. I just I probably just killed my map. But we're going to go past Cedar City to the town of Perowin, Bob. And we're going to go to a place called Hidden Falls, Hidden Haven Falls. Is that right? That's right. Talk about that, where that location is. Yeah, so this is right off of Highway 143 that goes from Perowin, the little town of Perowin, Utah, to Bryan Head and up to Cedar Breaks. It actually, 143 goes all the way over to a town of Penguich near or on the way to Bryce Canyon. But just off the side of the road going up Perowin Canyon on 143, there's a parking area and there's a sign that says Hidden Haven Falls. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a bit of a hike to get there. It's not that long, but it's a bit rocky. And I've been told recently that they've had some uh, damage going through on the hike. That's made it very difficult right now, but I'm sure they'll be repairing it. But that's what you come to. This, this falls in the back. It was quite a treat reaching this, and it was an enjoyable hike. It really was. We're going to take people up the road to Fillmore, but I'm going to bring up a Google map again because I think we need to recover that. And so we're going to go to Fillmore, Utah, right off of I-15, see if we can bring that up. And, and there is a place there that we, uh, a good friend of ours helped us to, to discover, didn't he? And it was, we didn't know what to expect, but it was better than what we thought was going to be there. And if you take a look at this picture, but talk about what we saw then and what's happened since then. Yeah, this this was completely unexpected. This is just outside the town, town of Fillmore, Utah, about central Utah in the county of Millard County. And the tourism director for the county uh, took us to these falls. And it was far more than what I expected in, in a nondescript area where you weren't expecting it. Um, and so it was uh, this higher falls that we saw and then went down cascading into a creek. But since then, they've had a large wildfire that hit that area. Now, we don't know if it went down into this Moss Falls area or not. We're hoping that it didn't, but it certainly did a lot of damage in and around that section. Um, this was so unexpected. I, I, I think that it survived and I think it probably looks pretty much the same as it did because the fire was going up and these falls are kind of down in a ravine, if we remember, Mark, yes. in a canyon in a ravine down deep at the bottom. And so I think they were more protected as the fire was working its way up the hill. We're sure hoping that we need to get back there this year and check that out. Uh, we're going to move up the, I'm going to go back to the, the map. And we're going to move over the mountain quite a ways. In fact, we're going to double back just a little bit. And let's give people a little bit of the lay of the land again. This is the corner of the state of Utah, St. George, Zion National Park. If you come up to the north by Bryce Canyon National Park, we've done a lot of work in the Bryce Canyon area and Capitol Reef National Park here. There is a beautiful highway, Scenic Byway 12, that connects 120 miles long, that connects the two national parks. There are the national parks on both ends of the road, three state parks along the highway. There are, there's the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, which this picture that we're going to look at now, if I can pull that up, is right off the road, right off Highway 12, but I think part of the monument or part of the BLM area right there. Yeah, this is uh, Lower Calf Creek Falls in the Calf Creek Recreation Area within the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments. 140 feet high and plunges down into a very cold water pool. And I've seen some guys uh, jumping into this pool during the hot months of summer to cool off. And it is much colder than they expected. Yeah. But uh, the, it's about a six mile hike round trip. 
the last quarter of a mile or so, I'm guessing, Mark, is really deep sand. So prepared for some deep sand hiking. And Mark knows how much I enjoy hiking in deep sand. It's your favorite. It's yeah. Your favorite. Well, so the place to get to Cascade or Capital, Lower Calf Creek Falls, if you see the town of Escalante and the town of Boulder here on Highway 12, and you'll see Highway 12 wrap around and work its way towards the north and go up over Boulder Mountain part of right here. So Lower Cascade Falls is there, or Calf Creek, I should say. And there is an upper falls, by the way, Bob, that's also here, but it's a steep one-mile hike, very steep, down to the falls and back up, and it's closer to the town of Boulder. So that's that's just another place that people can consider. Shorter hike, but maybe as difficult in that it's so steep. We're going to work yeah. our way up the mountain and look at this waterfall, or up, there, up the highway. If we were to go back to Highway 89 over this way. Uh, let's see if we can find it. There's 89, and I'm gonna come back in Utah again. We're gonna go north, kind of north of Bryce Canyon, up past, we're gonna look for Marysvale, aren't we? Isn't that the town we're looking for? Yep. yep. It's the- uh, Bullion Falls, and this is a picture you say you took with your iPhone. We have some better pictures, but this is the one we happen to have handy. Yeah, that's what I had. I, I didn't shoot anything with my uh, full frame camera that day. But yeah, this is in a really cool area. This is in the the uh, uh, east side of the Tesher Mountains outside of Marysville, Utah, which is considered the ATV capital of the world, right off of the world famous Paiute uh, ATV trail. And also nearby is Big Rock Candy Mountain the world famous Big Rock Candy Mountain that people have heard about through uh, the song that Burl Ives made famous. That was originally written by Harry McClintock. But anyway, this these, these are really cool falls that are up in the Bullion Canyon area. So out of Marriage Valley, you're gonna come up one of these canyons and I'm not pulling it up real quickly here, but that's where it is. Not too hard to get to. And I think there's a, a pretty well graded road to, to get there. And then the last part, you're gonna do some walking to get up to the falls, maybe, depending on, if you've got a UTV, you can get up there closer, but if you don't, you can, it's about, I would say, a half mile hike each direction, would you agree? Yeah, and it's a it's a pretty good graded dirt road to get there and take a passenger car. There were a lot of cars up that day uh, with folks hiking to the falls. The other thing, and I'm seeing, I'm showing up here is this miners park. We were impressed with that. That's relics or remnants from a, a mining camp. And that was really worth seeing. There's just a lot to tell you about, but we're talking about waterfalls today. Let's keep moving up the road. And I'm going to come back to my map and look at this waterfall. This waterfall, Bob, is we're going to go back over the mountain towards Capitol Reef National Park. And as you come out the east side of Capitol Reef National Park, in fact, it's probably right about in this area here, they actually diverted the, the Fremont River runs parallel to scenic by scenic byway 24 that goes through the park from the west to the east. This is the main road that dissects the park. And over here in this area, they, they diverted the, the Fremont River and it created a waterfall. We think that's kind of interesting and it's actually a good little photo shot. This is an older picture from a while back, but this is what you get and it's in this red sandstone. Yeah, and that was a very popular area. I think they kind of, um, I don't know if necessarily closed it off, but reduced the access to it. I think people were actually sliding down into the pool there and they wanted to keep that from happening, but very pretty. Uh, that's a pretty drive, Highway 24 through the park, Capitol Reef National Park. That's the main road running through the park and it's a beautiful drive. All right, so now there are, we, would, we invite anybody listening to this podcast to share with us their favorite waterfalls in, in Utah because there are certainly so many others that we're not going to cover today. But we're, we're just highlighting some of the ones we've been to. So we're going to back up here again on, on Utah and take people all the way north from southern Utah all the way up I-15, the distance from St. George to Provo, about three and a half hours. And when you get up into Provo, Bob, there are a couple of waterfalls up in this area. One of them is Bridal Veil Falls. It's up inside the canyon right here. And there's also one called Stewart Falls. We're going to show you a picture of Bridal Veil Falls if we've got that right here. Nope. I don't know if that's the one I was looking for. There's Bridal Veil yeah. Falls. Yeah. And the, I got to say, Provo Canyon is one of the most beautiful canyons in Utah. The drive is just spectacular. 
definitely one of the fall drives that we would recommend. But Bridalville Falls used to have a gondola that ran to the top years ago. And uh, they have a large parking area where you can stop and enjoy the falls, a walking area. So uh, definitely worth a stop, easy access to it. Just right in, just right off the canyon. The other falls that you mentioned, Stewart Falls, is just outside of Sundance Resort. Uh, you just go to the resort itself, and then there's a hiking trail that goes up to Stewart Falls from there. So here's Sundance. Here's here's the town of Provo and Orem. You come up Provo Canyon, Rydalveil Falls on the right, right here, and there's a great area to to get off and get into this area and and, and park your car. and And people like to walk around. There are some little trails that you can get into certain parts of the falls, but be very careful there, especially early in the year. And then, as you said, Stewart Falls up in this area by Sundance. If we continue, the other thing that we should probably talk about, and this is probably just spring runoff and river related, but we love to see the people floating inner tubes and, and rafts and paddle boards up and down the Provo River, not up, but down. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, sometimes during the hot months of summer, it looks like an LA freeway with inner tubes coming out. There's actually some outfitters there that uh, rent the tubes and also rafting trips. It's also a blue ribbon fishery for fly fishing. You'll see fly fishermen out on the river. See, there you go, pulling out all those things that you, you know that other people don't know about the state of Utah. Now, get me to where we want to go. We were up in the Uintas a few months ago. It was late last fall. And we got to the upper Provo River. And we got to the upper falls on the upper Provo River. And that's up in the Uintas area. And yeah. to get my bearing straight. It was back that's, up on, was it 150 that we were on? Yeah, it's on the Mirror Lake Highway, Highway 150, uh, just, you know, between Camas and Evanston. Um, there it is right there, Upper Provo Falls. Yeah. Again, that's just a parking lot right off the side of the highway, a short hike down to the river. There's actually a couple of different falls you can hike to. I think these were the lower falls. These were the, this was the upper falls, I believe. And then there was also a lower falls that you could hike to. And just a nice, you know, th this is such a nice drive during the summer months, very pleasant. Although this year, I'm going to say things are going to be a little different with all the snow that we've had. Utah has had record-breaking snow. The ski resorts up north have had over 800 inches of snowpack, some of them approaching 900 inches. So yeah, Alta just hit 900, in fact. Yeah, it's going to be a while before some of these roads are completely cleared out and the trails available to get to some of these places. Well, we're going to bring you back. We didn't even get to places that there might be uh, great waterfalls in the upper sections of the state. But just if you look at the state of Utah, we've taken you from St. George to the Provo area and into the Uintas and a lot of the central part of Utah where there's a lot of waterfalls. With spring runoffs, you're going to have some really beautiful things, but please be careful as you're out there. Any final words or thoughts as, you, as we wrap up this podcast, Bob? Yeah, and that, just to uh, echo what you said is that just the water is running swift. You know, where I live down here near Zion National Park, the Virgin River is just uh, that one thing to mention, and we'll probably discuss this on another podcast, is that it'll be a while before the narrows are available in Zion National Park because the river is running so high. Uh, just be careful out there because the power of this water will take you away before you know it. May watch your little ones, keep them close. Well, thank you, Bob, for co-hosting this podcast with me, and we will invite you to go to utahguide.com to learn more, follow us on our social media sites, and you can also go to utahphotogs.com to follow the photography and videography work that Bob and I do, and we cover the entire state. We're uh, pleased to be able to share what we know about the state of Utah. Today was Waterfalls. Look for other podcasts about other great subjects on utahguide.com. Thank you. 